Hello, sir. Can you start by telling us your name and your purpose of being here today? Hello, my name is Cassius Wade, and I'm here to be a part of the interview with Mr. Chad Jones pertaining to his sports marketing class. We're very glad to have you here today, sir. Uh, I'm going to start by asking about a little bit of your educational background. Well, I graduated Provine High School in Jackson, Mississippi in the year of 2015. Then I did a year at the University of Southern Mississippi, majoring in kinesiology. But while I was there, I realized that I had more of a passion for personal training because I've been working out my whole life. And while I was there, I had people work out with me and they were getting in great shape. So after that year, I came home and got my certifi certified license for personal training. Okay, what clearing company did you use to get your certification? I'm with the National Federation of Personal Trainers, NFPT. Okay, so professionally speaking, what would you say is your occupation? I'm a personal trainer. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about how you ended up in that field? Well, it's a long story, but long story short, I've been working out ever since the age of 12, and I played multiple sports, and I will always work out in between practices and the off season so throughout my years I gained a lot of knowledge about how to get in shape whether that's due to weightlifting, stamina, etc. So like as I mentioned earlier I would train people and train with people in college and they would get in shape and so after that year of college I came back home and realized that I had something and I said hey why not get paid for it and so I became a person, person, certified personal trainer. Okay, so it sounds like you've been in the field quite a number of years. Uh, based on your history in the field, can you tell us what are some of the challenges you face from the most common challenges to even the ones that people might not think of occurs in your field? The most uh, common challenge is being able to maintain clients because it's like a project that you can start but you never finish. And I feel like that's one of the most frustrating things to uh, in in this field in general is to maintain clients. Uh, you can get clients all day, but it's to, it's to maintain them. So that, I would say that's the most common challenge. Other things include, you know, just making sure, you know, if I meet a client two or three days after the week, it's kind of like school, you have to do your homework, making sure you're eating well, making sure you eat healthy, pertaining to your goal, and making sure on the few days we don't meet that you're doing what you're supposed to do. So those are the two I would say like the, the most common challenges that I face in my field. Okay, to uh, expound on some of the challenges that you mentioned, how have you found unique and creative ways to maintain your clients' interest and to maintain them in your, uh, in your personal training programs and regimens? What are some of the things in your skills and tactics and strategies that you utilize to keep them maintained and keep them interested on their a path to a healthier lifestyle and, and better bodies and the multitude of results that they can gain. Talking with your clients. You will be surprised of how many clients just want to come in and they want to have a good, a good workout. Me as a trainer, I have to make sure they're getting a great workout in. But also some clients, like to be a good listener, to be a good listener would take you miles ahead of the game because some people just want to vent and talk and have someone listen to them. So I feel like that is a very a very overlooked aspect of being a great personal trainer is just being a good listener. Okay, to kind of rebuttal to your statement, so you're basically saying one of the underrated concepts and tools in the field of personal training is actually establishing those personal relationships with your clients and having those social skills and the sociability to provide not only a environment that is conducive to providing them with health benefits but also an environment that makes them feel involved and appreciated and actually cared for by you being the trainer. That's absolutely correct. That's exactly what I meant. Okay. What are some of the prospects of jobs in your field as well as the level of job competition that you notice in your field? It's uh, 2022, so it's especially with uh, the whole social media era and things of that nature it's high competition, very, very high competition. It's high competition, that's all I can say. Okay. What would you say is the overall demand of jobs in your field, whether that be low, medium, or high? Currently in the year 2022, what do you perceive the job competition and the, the demand of jobs in your field to be? It's very high. It's, it's high. It's high demand. Very high demand. Okay. 
For a collegiate student who may watch this video and they're pursuing a similar career in the same field of personal training, what are some advice and tips you will provide for them? Continue. First of all, you have to look the part to be the part. So continue to expand on your knowledge of staying in shape, getting in better shape, and just expanding your knowledge on workouts, workout group routines, different body types, and nutrition while you're there. So therefore, when you actually start training people, it becomes second nature. Never neglect yourself because through yourself is how you're able to help others. So don't neglect yourself, basically. Okay, Mr. Wade, can you tell us some of your day-to-day -day responsibilities? Uh, as mentioned previously from the previous question, the first half of my day is I have to dedicate, I get up early, I dedicate, uh, dedicate time to myself to go to the gym, get in shape, get in better shape, do other things on the side like martial arts and things of that nature so I can expand my knowledge so I can put it all into a workout plan for my clients. And then after that, it goes back to just training my clients, maintaining my clientele, making the workouts not only more effective but interesting as well. Okay, and to sum it up here, with this being a sports marketing class, I want to ask you a few quick questions about mm -hmm. sports marketing and just marketing in general. Uh, for you personally, what are some of your strategies and tools that you use to actually market yourself and market uh, the Cash's Way brand? To put it quite simply, it's just it's just being out, going out, and goes back to the previous question, keeping yourself in shape, keeping yourself a walking billboard. That's number one. Number two is social media. Just continue to put your clientele on social media, continue to put your workouts on social media, and things of that nature, testimonies. Three, kind of three and two kind of tie, word, word of mouth. When people tell people and they actually see the results of that particular individual, it spreads like a wildfire. Um, the whole, you know, passing out cars and things of that nature is cool, but it's 2022. If anything, trying to convince someone to train that may not even have their mind set on training can kind of repulse and make that particular person feel pressured. So you just got to stick with those three I just mentioned, and it's just a timing thing. You have to keep going, and just like any business, you can go from, uh, you can go from, struggling to very successful in a matter of a day if you just keep on sticking with it. Okay, and with marketing in 2022, specifically in the field of personal training, what would you say has been most effective for you? Has there been marketing with person-to-person uh, -person relationships and interactions and personal interactions with people and with clients, or would you say that the social media presence and marketing on social media platforms has been more effective or would you say the two are mutually beneficial? They, it's like 50-50 they're mutually beneficial so I would say those two work perfectly right now. It hasn't outweighed the other just yet. It's literally like 50-50 at this moment in time. Okay. Uh, great points there. So for those watching who may be interested in the field, you have to have that ability to create personal interactions and develop personal relationships and be social with your clients and with the targeted population as well as you have to be very active in promoting yourself through the various social media platforms that we have in the current year 2022. And my last question, Mr. Wade, and I'll let you get up out of here. What are some of your end goals being in the field of personal training and maximizing your personal health and abilities? What is your end goal? Uh, everything is shifting towards online now, social media, digital websites, and things of that nature. So ultimately, I want to establish a well-established website or app with workout plans and videos to correlate with those workout plans so I can train tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of people at once to get most out of my time and be able to pursue other things uh, during that time. Okay, and before I let you get out of here, Mr. Wade, what are some of your social media platforms, whether they be YouTube and Instagram, Facebook, what are some of your social media platforms that you would like to leave uh, your name and link uh, in this video? Well, my Instagram is man, M-A-N, underscore of, O-F, 
underscore steel C W S T E E L C W and my Facebook and my YouTube channel is my name Cassius Wade C A S S I U S space W A D E. I thank you so much for your time today, Mr. Wade, and I wish you nothing but blessings in your career, pal.